Hello, happy September Wine Club member. Welcome back to September's Wine Club video. This month, I really took it over the top on the value side of the luxury versus value wine club that I offer. And this month, we literally have six different wines. And it's not often I get wines on the more everyday price value, but when I do, I want to make sure I find the best I can for you guys. So this month's whole thing was, I feel like it's getting colder again. Everyone is really missing families and friends and a lot of us are finally, we're finally getting to a point where we're ready to hand out again. I wanted to have a lineup of wine that if you have your family gathering or your friends coming over, you can literally pop them all open. I don't care what kind of wines that your friends or family might like. If you get this lineup and you put it out, you got a carbon funk for every wine. All right, so let's go. Essentially, this month we have one of each variety of whale, two of Pinot Noir. That's one of those moments where I honestly originally had five wines picked out, and I'm doing that Ocean Eleven thing. I go, you think we need one more? You think we need one more? Okay, we'll get one more. And we ended up with six. That's really awesome. So let's go over it. The first is a 2018. This is a Huron Sauvignon Blanc from Mendocino County. This is a very light, crisp, and refreshing Sauvignon Blanc that sees absolutely no oak. I'm a huge fan of the founder. It's actually a female wine owner. She started this winery back in 1995, which is very rare back in the days to have a female-owned winery. And she is a very worldly winemaker and owner. She has traveled around the world and her style and her wine is just very easygoing. I think it's a very good balance between that new and old world style. And I think you will get a lot of people loving the wine. And this is a $20 bottle of Sauvignon Blanc that I think in it could really easily be loved from anyone who likes a really crisp, refreshing type of wine. And then on the other hand, the second wine we're going to talk about today is a 2017 Laurent Conard Company. This is a smaller burgundy producer and it's very interesting because for the longest time, because of the technology and it's hard to market, most of the people like them were a farmer. They own land, they farm the land, but they don't know how to bottle or market their own wine. So they were for the longest time pretty much forced to sell their grapes or their wines to the bigger co-op. And it's kind of cool that as we move on to the more um, higher technology, better marketing, easier marketing, a lot of the wineries are starting to bottle their own wine under their own label. So we're getting more variety and we're getting to taste the individual ter um, style of different winemaker and different terroir that makes it very interesting. And the reason why I picked this is because I don't want something that's super over the top. Um, I think for a good value, easy drinking purpose, this producer is killing it. He doesn't do a ton of oak. He picks the fruit when it's ripe, but it, because it is from France, it's not quite as that fertile soil as the California style um, Chardonnay. So even when they're picking the fruit when it's ripe, there's still some restraint. There's still a lot of minerality. Adding that to the fact that they're not adding a bunch of new oak is a very easy, smooth drinking Chardonnay from France that will satisfy any of your uh, Chardonnay fan at your family gathering or your party, or just to drink it for yourself. Next, I feel like people are loving rosés nowadays. Oh, my light is a little bright. All right, next is the Julian Rosé. This this bottle is very shiny. It's like hard to get a really good photo of the label, but this is from Carmel Valley or Monterey County, California. This winery has been around for a while. They were established back in 1982. The family here purchased about 655 acres of Hellside Vineyard in Carmel Valley back in 1982. All the elevation for their vineyards are averaging about 1,400 feet elevation. What's very special about this rosé is that they are made in the Saignier method, which is a French technique where you bleed the red grape or red wine. What I mean is they're crushing the grape and allowing the color from the red grape to soak into the wine. That's how it's getting its color. But they also mix a couple of white wine varietal in there. So it's like a partial sunny and partial mixing of white wines into this like very geeky kind of cool rosé. There's quite a few different varietal in there. We're looking at 55% Cap Franc, which is actually one of my favorite red varietal to make into a rosé. I just think it's super exotic. You have a really nice floral mid palette 
thing going on that you don't see a lot of, uh, in a lot of the other rosé that creates a, a little more of that elegance. But yes, yeah, still has good amount of body. They also have 25% Semillon in there. Again, Semillon helps to give that weightiness on the palette. So you're not just feeling like, oh, it's a rosé, oh, here, in and out. And then you are actually having some kind of substance that sits on the palette that makes this a very satisfying rosé to drink. And a little bit of Pinot, Pinot Noir, Sauvignon Blanc, and Black Muscat to run all the rest. Really fun, really cool, really geeky rosé. I think your family will love. And just so you know, this is not a sweet type of rosé. It's a dry rosé, so it will pair very well with food and appetizers as well. Next, I decided to go with two Pinot Noir for you guys this month just because Pinot Noirs are so versatile. It can pair with uh, vegetable dishes, fish dishes, and even some lighter meat dishes. You just can't, in my opinion, get enough of great Pinot Noir. As you know, if I'm not, I'm usually selling Pinot Noir. Rather, it's from France or from California or from Oregon. So this month, you get one from Oregon and get one from California. We'll start with the California one. This is the 2014. The Pinot Noir is actually a hook and ladder brand. A lot of people might be unfamiliar with this brand because they just started back in 2003. But if any of you are a fan of Sonoma side of Pinot and Chardonnay, you probably heard of the Roche Chardonnay. That's the family who started it. And they started that brand back in the 70s. They have a lot of land. They started, they were the leader in the industry, Cecile. The Roche was a firefighter in San Francisco and they started the brand in the 70s and they learned and they started growing. They were one of the OG in Sonoma, Sonoma County. They actually started the Sonoma Winery Co-op. So they're definitely one of the OG, but their brand, the Delors Charnay, is so popular that it was sold to a French family back in 20, 2003, but they still have a lot of their estate land. So they decided to kind of focus in on very geeky, very small individual plot and vineyard that they find really amazing and bottle them individually. And that's where Hook and Ladder uh, happen. As the name suggests, they're paying tribute to the founder's uh, occupation, which was originally as a firefighter from San Francisco. And that's why this bottling is called the Sir Alarm. It's actually their reserve bottling. They blend two of their single vineyard, only the best plot in this bottle. So it's one of those rare wines and there's only 650 bottle made of this wine so quite rare and i hope you enjoy them i think they are killing it and i also feel like a lot of time we're drinking wines too young so when you trust me me i you will see me sending you a lot of wine that actually already have some bottle age to them so you can start to enjoy and get a taste of what vintage wine tastes like and that secondary aroma and things that you just don't get in a younger bottle of wine so i hope you enjoy this next again i want you to enjoy something that has a little bit of bottle aging this is a 2015 this is the young Val reserve it's from the McNeville at AVA in Oregon in Willamette Valley. It's actually the second oldest vineyard in this AVA. They've been there since 1983. And this was actually a warm vintage, considered one of like the perfect vintage for the winemaker. They got right through. They don't use a lot of new oak because they like the fruit to come through. They only do dry farm organic practicing, although they are not out there uh, chasing the certificate and whatever have you, but the practice in the vineyard is very legit. Um, and you are seeing that old vine really coming through in the bottle and again the dry front so then the vine is struggling and plus the warm weather you're getting a very expressive a very delicious very fruity bottle in this Pinot Noir so both of these are gonna be yum uh, I guess if you're swimming a party if you're like me and you love your Pinots you might want to hide this too just for yourself and can uh, put the rest out there and last but not least this is one of my favorite I've been offering this for four plus year I want to share them with you because I think it's one of the best Cabernet you can buy at a $50 price point this is the 2016 a really amazing vintage in Napa Ultra Vest it is from Calistoga so further up north with warmer weather and you're getting riper fruit and a lot more expressive notes on the wine so Ultra Vest is I think laden for once more or one more time once again starting over essentially this is a wine made from one of the OG from Napa Vincent Arroyo he retired but you know some people just love what they do and they can never retire and that's exactly what happened to him so then he started up his own love project again and he gets really put his personality in there making a very bold expressive and delicious cap I ever since the 2014 vintage i've been offering them i've never been disappointed every time i put it in a lineup 
people are always so surprised that this bottle is only $50 retail because it tastes like a hundred dollar bottle of wine and it's 100% Cabernet from two single veneer in Cal Calistoga. It's just very hard to find wines of this quality and this price point nowadays in Napa. So I want to share it with you because I think this will be a great everyday wine or wines for the party and it's very hard to find because it's a very small production as well. I want to emphasize that my goal is always to find the best value, the best quality wine combined and really impress you. So this month, even though they're all more quote unquote everyday value wine, but I was able to find these three, they're all about $20 a bottle. These two are about $45 a bottle and this is $50 a bottle for those of you who are fasting mass. Actually adds up to be about $200 retail if you would have purchased them separately. But my goal is to look for amazing deal, talk to the winery, seek out the better deals I can offer and pass on the deal to you guys and offer it to you at $150 for this whole set. So I really, really hope you enjoy them. I hope you can um, be proud to bust this out at your next party or family gathering and make everyone really happy. And thank you so much for your support. It is almost a whole year since our wine club. I love you all very much and I just hope you guys are enjoying all this wine. Stay safe, have fun, enjoy life and I'll see you for our next month's wine club.